Welcome, everyone. No one. Three people. <laughs> At least that's what the Twitch says. Today, it's gonna be boring. <laughs> eh. Are you excited? <laughs> it was RM. Okay, so yesterday we were working on uh, as a translation magismo, as I call it, which is, if you don't know, a tool for making transitions in a cell, making it easier to make transitions in a cell. Also helps you with things like, you know, like applying effects and garbage like that. So if I will go here and here, you'll see that I duplicated something on accident, but yeah, I can example against uh, the keycard janitor so now I will write like janitor keycard and yeah to, to remember that I can save this file now and I can also load it and I can express to SS proprietary file form although I, I mean it is to SS uh, weird format and I can import it right from a cell uh, so yeah that's where we left, left off except that during the last stream and after the last stream, I've also implemented this. Oh, sorry, actually, first. I've managed to fill out every single... Uh, like, de define, if that makes sense. I managed to like, include every single entry from the items uh, class. All the different keycards, uh, guns, and other garbage. And I've also added the support for, for example, the HID sign. Which, if you don't know... Hold up. What was that sound? What do you mean? Which sound? Oh, hold up. Wrong wrong scene. Translations... Uh, English. Yeah, so the HID sign is one of those files that... Uh, like, th there aren't identifications for every line. Instead, it's just like... Every line is the next... Oops, it's the next message that will appear. So when you have that sign, it'll say micro HID. And it will say storage, then nothing, then authorized personal and only. So yeah, uh, now we support files like that. We will not be filling out the rest of this garbage today because... Never mind, exactly. Because today I started working on something... That makes me mad. Uh, this. So, you know, like in Unity... Mm, here you see this like I can drag this up and down uh, this this is like a, a reordable li a reorderable reorderable list Reor reorderable list yeah reorderable list and uh, yeah I want to achieve something similar the problem is unity does isn't really made for things like this or like unity's IMGY that's what it's called IMGY or UGY yeah, who cares unity's GUI so I started working on my own version, which you can see, like, depending on the height of this item, it will extend or shorten itself. If it's too small, then it will start at some point. But I'm stuck. I don't know. I don't know actually what to do because, like, for example, let's say we use this the orderable list for something that is more complex, so every single item will have a name and a value. For example. But that's a little bit difficult to do because it's not difficult, it's impossible to do because like how how do we read those values? How do we set those values? How do we know where what is what? Yeah, I'm not sure how to do that. Unless we will just cheap out and you can only like edit strings. And I'm doing this because in SL there is this file called manifest which is a special file saving json that has yeah multiple different you, you can have multiple locales whatever that means the first font order I should hold up will you be able to find a single file <gasps> gents I found it what are you doing cocaine that is what I'm doing Translation tool, translation magismo, that's, that is what it's called. So once again, I can just open it and I have a list of every single entry that I've added to this point. 
What does it do? What well, it makes translating easier? Uh, currently it does nothing. <laughs> but yeah, uh, if I will finish this, you will have everything categorized right here. Maybe you will. You will be able to just edit, like say, like for example, uh, janitor key cards. So now in game, it will display janitor key card above the main, uh, above the in the, the, the inventory. And yeah, you will be able to save this, load this, in, export it, import it, and also it will. And in the middle, I like playing with your voice commands. Which is, they will work because I am unable to get them work. I, I am unable to get them to work again. I thought it was like a Windows thing. It's like an, in the middle there will be a preview of what you're editing. So let's say like, I don't know, you're editing the HID sign. And you'll see a screenshot from the game showing you. Last time I played with them it was 13.0. I haven't tried it in a bit. I don't know, I couldn't get them to work so... Maybe it was just me. Yeah, like for example, it was like the HID sign and it will show you the HID. Actually, no, let's go in a cell and let's get some like... Let's get like a screenshot to put in the background, like temporarily. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how to do this reordable list garbage. No food, I hate you. You don't see, I hate you. I hate both of you. I am going to go insane if we are going to continue this music. Can I? Thank you. You know the default interface, it's not good. Or at least it's not made for this. Uh, nope, not this one. I don't know. Splatoon 3 OST this time. Also, I think I'm a little bit sick. <laughs> so don't mind every single time I go off frame to blow my nose. Don't listen to me. Thanks, thanks, thank you for not responding and allowing me to change the volume. Love you, the operation guide is everywhere. I love the operation guide. H I D uh, right teleport uh, te uh, teleport. No, I'm gonna go to the nuke silo. I think that'll look better. Take like temporarily, like. In the future, you'll be able to custom, like, it will show the messages. But for now, it won't show it because I'm too stupid to do that. Whoopsie, not that one. Uh, F1. Okay. Done. Now, excuse me, Steam. Manage b b b b b b. Oh, hold up. Uh, this screenshots. Show folder. Okay, that's nice. Uh, now we'll have a separate folder. Images. Uh, I'm too lazy. Now you put the voice commands on GitHub, and my GitHub won't load. This is so sad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, sure. Let's keep those settings. Okay, we have this canvas, which would be like the world. I guess. Yeah, it's gonna be in world space, so if I... will see... 
right here. How do, how do you set the size? Oh, hold on. This is where you set the size. With 16 and height would be 9. Because of course. And we will add this very own image. Oh, it's a sprite. Uh, no. Image. Image. Hello, look and chat. Hello. Yes, I archived it. I, I archived it. Yes. So now you'll have this very, very operational of a guide. So yes, later you'll be able to zoom in and out and just look around. Yeah. For example, let's say you you zoom in the sign. Oh, it's Z. Hold up. If you just zoom into the side and you see operation like guidance gonna update. That's the idea. Currently it doesn't work. <laughs> and it's not gonna work for the stream either, so sorry. Let's make this zoom out a little bit, I guess. Sure, this. Okie dokie. Well then. Why is it getting cut off here? I don't care. We will today. Our main problem is this thing right here. So let's just for this example at this input field. Uh And we'll change the height to 50. To 70. Yeah. And we'll add 10 from each side for, to this field. Yeah, so if I duplicate it. And I have multiple fields, except, you know. They don't really, they do not have a value and we cannot set the value, which is not great. So reorderable list item. We'll now have a public. You have to use TextMesh Pro in order for things to look decent. Input field. So we will re uh, input. We will reference the field of the input and select item this. Look, I'll be famous 100%, real no fake, I've managed to reproduce a bug that none of the Q8 community was able to reproduce for a few months. So the dev team couldn't fix it, the bug where you can't lock down or black out as 079. I don't care. So. <laughs> <laughs> ah, no, stop doing this. <laughs> Lovely. Fair. Of course it is. I'm always fair. <laughs> okay, reordable item list right here. Assign this garbage. Yeah. Uh, item, item, item. This is the thing that will, oh hold up no this is the thing that manages everything. But this is, is a template. Awake. Although I don't know how what how execute always works, so I will just do this. Will you tell us ASD in the console? <gasps> Not. So it's not awake, it's asleep. It goes sleep sleep. So when the application application was thing starts, we will disable the item template. So 
if item template exists. We'll just tell item template, hello item, uh, item template. And we will say go sleep sleep. And we now use the item template to just uh, keep uh, duplicating it in case like when we actually show values. So label value. Yes, I guess. Public list. This is gonna be a list. String values. This is this will be a list of all of the different values, all of the different fields that will show up here because this is just one field and there will be second, third, fourth, fifth, or how many you want. So on awake, or maybe we should find it. Ah, uh, no, I'm crazy. Show, 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 show. We will loop through every single value. Var item in value for each, and for each value, uh, values. Sorry, and for each item, we will just. Uh, you don't mind if I use your stream while I'm playing a cell? Sure, but what's the point of watching it then? <laughs> well, okay then. A list item instantiate. We will create a new item. That will be this item right here. And it will be apparented under in items holder because they hold the item so... Yeah. Oh. Uh. And we'll add them to our secret list, because we will have that. A list UI item. A list of them. Items. Like, yeah, items, makes sense. And we'll rename this to value. Items that add list item, which is the right item we've just created. We'll just add it to the list, and yeah. And also, before anything, list item dot value dot value. I value your privacy. List item. Hmm. What are you? Dot input dot text will be equal to a value. Yeah. So I think this should update live, but I don't think that should update every single frame. It's a bad, very bad idea to update every single frame. Or maybe actually it is not. Huh. Okay, so every single frame. We will just check, like if the if the number. Oh no, actually, no, that doesn't make sense either. Hmm. Hold up. There's this funny thing called unvalidated. I remember. Okay, unvalidate. That makes sense. Hold up. Why do you do this to my small little heart? Thank you for following, Scarlet. Hello, I'm back. I can hear. Actually, not that bad for me because I have it all the way muted. So values unvalidate. So, like you know, in a drop down. Shut up! In a drop down, for example, right here. Like if I update the values live, they will update live. I want that. <laughs> I think I'm too lazy to do that. I think I am too lazy to do that. Instead, this will be private, or this will be uh, serialized. Fit. So the editor will only be uh, the only will be will only be able to edit this in the editor. However, if you were to you know try editing these values, then you can just use this, and this is gonna act like this imposter thing as I talked about yesterday. So it it will say, "Hey, I'm a variable," but it isn't. Hold up, it's not supposed to be a string; it's supposed to be a list. Okay. So when we get the when we try getting the values, then we'll say yeah sure here here are the values 
But if you want to set the values, then public void update uh, items. Okay, so if we try to update the values, then we will set those values to the thing the, the, uh, we are requesting to set. Uh, hold up, value. Values would be equal to the value. But we will then also update items. So if we change this, well, we're just going to update every single item that's visualized in the editor. Not in the editor, in the game, in the project, in the application. I don't care. Update items. And update items, what will do? What will do? Mm -mm -mm. We'll just slip through every single item. Or hold up. So, you should make a chat system after this translation tool. What do you mean a chat system? Define chat system. What is that supposed to mean? For SL, that doesn't make sense. Like, speak in console. What? Oh, wrong button. What? Like, speak in the SS... Like, what's speaking in SS console? What are you trying to say? What would be the point of that? Anyways, uh, update items. If... Math to, uh, No, hold up. If the... So, if... There will be more various. What if someone doesn't have a mic? Oh, you mean that? Like a plugin that you can just use text messages, send text messages. That is interesting, although that would be a little bit annoying. Values. So, if there are more values, then we have spawned in items. We will spawn in additional items. Items. Uh, Items.count. Then we will just do this thing. We will... Okay, so th there are more values and items. Then we will just need to loop this through... Actually, hold up. No, no, not hold up. If we do this, and this will loop through, uh, for all, all the items that we are missing, or just, well, once again, I do what we do what we did here. It's a little bit different because we will not set a value because we're not like that. I guess we can just do this, do it like this, and you can remove all of these. Yay! But if shut up, items. If there will be more items spawned in items, and there will be less values. Then we will need to remove some of them. So once again, oh, this is, go this is actually gonna be a little bit difficult, maybe, I think. No, it's not. Uh, four. We will start at items, at values.count, and we will loop through items. Oh, hold up, I'm doing the same thing again. Oh, no, no, I'm not. Minus values to count. So this will just start at the index of the first item that we need to remove, and then we will work through to the last one. So items that add. No, what am I doing? No, remove. <laughs> I just want to actually require us to do this. So here we will firstly. We will try getting the item, or I guess not try, we'll just get the item from items. Then we will items dot uh, remove, we will remove that item once we copy this. And then we will just destroy the item in question. I call up, we'll actually do, will we do something? Uh, no, we won't. Uh, is playing 
If we're not playing, if, app, if we're just in the editor, this won't work, and this won't work because items uh, values. Hold up, is there like some kind of on va value changed? Yes, thank you. Name of update items. This is gonna be really handy. If it will work. So let's uh, actually not for each or for sorry. Items that count. We will just look for every item, and we will once again set the cor uh, set the proper text. Items dot value. Items dot 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 dot. Come on. What is it supposed to be? Items i dot input dot text will be equal. Items i. Actually, we will not do this, we will send it quietly. Set text without the notify and we will set it to the corresponding value. Yes. This will work, I am sure of it. 100%, it, will, it always works. Let's try. Uh, 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 okay, uh, and another thing, every single time we instantiate this item, we need to make sure it's set to true. But I'm pleased to do that, but... Uh... Oh yeah, hold up, in my little calculation, in here. I just need to add this line, so if... Child dot game object dot active is how do you check if the object is active enable it no because there's set active but where's get ac active what active active in hierarchy what active self active what do you want you scheme of just say active or active self. Where if it's not active self, then continue. So if the object is disabled, we'll just not calculate the height for it. And now this will work for the first, like, yeah, first try. Because it always works first try. Values, we will add uh, five of them. We will add A, B, C, D, and E. And this will work 100%. First try. Close. Uh, okay. So I think I found another problem. I tried being lazy, but now we actually need to do this. Uh, list item that game object that set active true. We need to do this here. So sorry, we are saying to destroy this because it won't work. We need to enable every single one of those objects, or they'll just be invisible. So it'll be kind of pointless. It's gonna probably work 100% first try. <laughs> kind of. Why is there a second one? It's so strange. Why is there a second one? Ah, oh, please don't tell me you don't remove them. That's gonna be really annoying. Huh. Hold up. On destroy. I look for every single item and destroy it. Destroy item. And you will clear the list. Least list. Hopefully this will work. 100%. First try. As it always does.
Pardon me. If application is playing, then we we'll actually destroy it. And if it's not playing, then we do not care. Why is there more of them? If I enter play mode and I exit play mode, it's gonna work. 100%. Crap. Like on exit play mode something, on exit. You know, see, I hate you with a passion. Let's try this, this will 100% work first try, I am sure of it. Like it doesn't, it doesn't want, the application doesn't want destroying these things and it should. Please. Now it just doesn't do that and anyway. If application is playing. Application isn't playing return. Wh why are you doing this to me? There's someone... Oh, it's not gonna trigger the second time, isn't it? Uh, on... On enable. You trigger now, thank you. I guess instead of on destroy, it will be... On disable. Come on! I want to do funny translation. Fine, we will just yoink this because it is stupid and yeah, sure, why not? You're like kidding me, what now? Oopsie, actually I did it a little bit too much from here. What's the problem? Shut up. Oh, hold up, I see it. Be killing me. What is this garbage? Like, literally, why are you not triggering? Gent. I love Unity. I love Unity with a passion. Now, let's solve the other mystery. Why is this not expanding? Unless. My calculations were incorrect. Active in hierarchy. I know what active self does. Yonancy, you're making this so overcomplicated for literally no reason. Still nope. Maybe write the server on enable. Nope, it's still gonna say nah. Lovely. It updates every frame. I will remove this again. Wait, will that change in the thing? Well, that doesn't make any sense. Why doesn't it work? It's automatically. I don't understand. Why 
Why? Oh boy, time to time to bring out the big guns. Debug the, the log. Let's count the sh children and we will also measure their PP. Yeah, I don't understand. Come on. Come on. What now? You, no, no, no. You're telling me this doesn't trigger at all. All this is assigned. Why is this disabled? Why is this disabled? Why is this disabled? You... Suddenly it works. Okay, yeah, thanks. I guess we do need to... Okay, yeah, we need to use this here. And sure, yep, yep, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yep, mm-hmm. Ah, so, now, if I say, G, it absolutely nothing. If I add one, then it did absolutely nothing. But if I will... Okay, now it suddenly did something. That's fantastic. It's delayed? That is so weird. Okay, that's really weird that it's delayed. That's really weird, but that, that's just the plugin I use. Like, it, no, it doesn't matter. Unless I can set something here. Or there. Nope. On value change. No, that's the only one. Well, that's fantastic. But we are also at an editor battle. If I want to, I can just trigger this automatically. Let's get all the way through this piece of garbage because it never works. Yay, hooray me. I have the did it. Ah, oh, it's just only the beginning of this pain, isn't it? Uh, now we need also to add an option to reposition them and add them and remove them, which is gonna be its own world of pain <laughs> huh, reposition how will we do this I want to overcomplicate this too much huh huh In the middle, we will just create a holder. It's gonna be annoying. You know what? I feel lazy today. We will just add like a button to move it up and down. I do not care. <laughs> I, we could call some like like algorithm for dragging it. Nah. I'm too lazy. I'm in fact too lazy, okay. So, we will just move uh, this a little bit um, from the left. Mm -hmm. uh, left, we move it by about uh, 30. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah, sure. Um, we will add uh, the button number one. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. We will add easy button number one. We will add bronze. We will have bronze on the side. The bronze will now sit in here. It will have size of 40. Add uno bron. We're gonna add bron. And we will add 
aspect ratio fitter. Now height is gonna control the width and it's gonna set to uno. Yay. And now if we will anchor this in this very specific way. Then we have small brun brun. And actually I've made I already oh yeah, also behind the scenes I've made a couple of icons. Very small ones and minor. Uh arrow. There we go. And you rotate it by 180 degrees. And we'll just copy this button, except that this time anchors will be set to 0 and 0.5. And it will not rotate the picture. See? There I go. They are a little bit too big. Hmm. How do you fix this? Ha ha ha, uh, we will at, uh, subtract some from the top. And that seems about the right. 10. And you will subtract from bottom here. Or I guess you will do, do 5 top and 5 bottom and you will also do this right here. It seems decent. And we will pick a much nicer looking color of this. This is too small. We will instead pick something like this yeah sure okay yeah this makes this makes a lot of, this makes perfect sense so this reordable list select item does absolutely nothing and they will not be selectable i've just decided but public void move move item reordable list UI item, item, and the amount that it will be moved by. So if we will move it up, up, right? Yeah, if we will move it up, then it's gonna be like minus one. If we, and if we try moving it one to the bottom, it's gonna be plus one. That's the idea. Move item. So now, this, get rid of this because it's stupid. If we will have two methods, or one method, public, void, move. Oopsie. Move item if reorderable list does not exist then uh, well we do not care but if it does exist then we will ask the list to or we will tell the list that we want to move ourselves by the amount specified in here yeah and when we press that when we press the button to move we will need to well move it wow incredible incredible insight thank you me Thank you, me. Uh, <laughs> okay, so if the amount we want to move this object by is in the range, like for that, we will do int current index, which we will get from items. So items dot index of this item. So this is our current index, and we will have another index called well new index, which will just be the current index plus the amount we want plus the amount we want to move by. Now, if current uh, sorry items contain uh, in no, there's index in range. Uh, why is not why is it not showing up? Hold up, I need to use I think QA sick. And now it will work. Index in range. New index. If the index is in range, then great. But if it's not, actually no. We're not gonna check for this. We will just say new index. We will clamp it so it will not go. It will not overflow. This command still works, but still buggy as always. Yeah, I should update it. Maybe one day instead of streaming this, I will stream the voice controller. Value, new index, you will clamp it to zero. Why is it a float? It's an int. Stop that. And we will clamp it to the maximum floating point value to compare against.
new in the uh, sorry no uh, items that count minus one yeah new index so now we have our new index and we'll just need to swap the current index and the new index oh this is a moving algorithm it's a really stupid thing maybe we should copy from qasic yeah that's what we will do i've already wrote this in qasic if we go into the editor section of QASIC, in the input, in the um, in the map editor content tree, we'll see move, and this move operation is quite quite the interesting thing. Yeah. Right, so first, if amount will be equal to zero, then we'll just ignore this request. And if it won't be equal to zero, we will move this. But this is going to be quite um, interesting. Uh, values current index will be equal to null, I guess. Then values we will insert item dot the input.text we will insert that one there i guess we will insert hold up we'll insert this var value can i do that okay yes i can then we'll get the item from values current index insert this value here and then we'll just remove item can i do that Mm -hmm. Let's remove. Remove add. Yeah, that makes sense. Old index is current index. Current index is one. Current index. Okay. That doesn't make any sense. I don't to just use the new index. How does this work? Oh, no, 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 no. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. Current index. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So theoretically, we will be able to move the item if I set this up, if I set this up properly. Well, let's see. Actually, hold up. Instead of doing this, I think I will just check like if current index is equal to new index. We'll just ignore this completely. Yeah, that's a little more smarter. Now we have two buttons. One is up for up. One is for down. And you will need to make them none and we will need to remove this for the sake of our sanity and we will select uh, this come on this thing will item move item by up will move it by minus one minus one and down will move it by one it doesn't make sense but it will make sense it makes sense somehow in some universe that makes sense so just trust me Beautiful. <gasps> I did not set this. I forgot. I forgot to set this. So if I create an item, or maybe I should just have a separate method for creating an item. Okay. I will copy the code from here. List item dot reorderable list will be equal to this, and we will add the item, and we will return this item. That makes sense. So I guess we will be able to make this look nice here in the end. Also, I think we can do this. And in here, you say here, I like that word. Let's create a new item, value. Yeah, and just var list item will be equal to this, and there we go. So now it will work 100% first try. Because it always works first try. 
Dobra. O, hold on. Uh, but now if I press this. Didn't work. Well, then that's not great. That's not great at all. Hmm, <laughs> that's not great. Why are you doing this to me? Okay, current item and new index. Let's see if they're actually the same or... It's compared for ourselves, we don't trust even here our own holdings, because I guess in this case... I just completely doesn't trigger. Why? Ah, oh, okay. I I messed up. Sorry, sorry, everyone. So end one. So if I press update up items, <gasps> it changed, guys. This is amazing. So guys, we did it. Incredible! Wow! Worky, it worky, incredible! I'm smart! Okay, now we can delete this. The last thing we need to do is adding items and removing items. So let's get to it. Uh -uh -uh. So every item will also have an additional button to the left. Oh, for the level. My idea. The move buttons, this will be called. Should not be capturing there is a hot control. Still don't understand what that means, but okay. From the left, we will take another 50. Getting a little bit cramped here, but okay. UI image. Uh, delete button. Button and aspect ratio fitter. We played Deep Rock Corp, Cor Rock Galactic today on the stream and after the stream, I don't care when. Uh, I'm not sure. I need to water the flowers or they will die. I can credit like flowers. If you give one milliliter of water to flowers, like an additional one milliliter of water to, to a flower, it will just die. Like I don't understand. Like j just don't drink it, bruh. Man. Okay, this time height will control the width. With you will position it the anchors like this. Yeah. I guess we will position it like this. Then the oh no 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 no. Width will control the height. So the width will be 40. And it will be right here. Or actually it will be zero and we will change the anchor. I never changed the anchor, but today we will change the anchor. Incredible. Actually, I think uh, 30 and we'll move it by 10. Uh, minus 10, sorry. I do not have an icon for a minus symbol, for, so for now it's just gonna be a square. It's gonna be... We're, we're gonna make a minus symbol, do not worry about that. <laughs> yeah. So, now we need to give this item the ability to remove itself. Remove item and amount. What? No. That, that doesn't make any sense. If the reordable list does not exist, then we do not care. But if the reordable list exists, then we will just say delete item this. Yeah, that's it. And here we'll create a new method for deleting the item in question. So yeah, pretty much we'll just get the index and if... Uh, 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 reorderable list. Actually, hold up, I forgot. Update items. I was saying to call this here. What happened here? Uh, if 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 values dot 
index in range item but we need to get the index and we'll get the index by just asking what's the index of this item uh items that index of item yeah index if index is not in range then we remove it and if it is in range then we'll just well, delete it values to the remove at index as simple as that easy Now that's easy. Oh, okay, hold up. Uh, I for I messed up. This button does not do anything. Now it will do something. Uh, not not this one. Here we need to say that it should remove item. Okay, now it's gonna work. Now it's gonna work 100%. I will be able to move it without pressing some dinky button, and I will be able to remove it. Why do you do this to me? I guess one of these didn't work. Hmm, hold up. I don't think this loop works properly. Debug to the log. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, values, items, uh, items, count, values, what? It's just, it has to be just this. And I think that will work. First try, as always. Why is it all E? But it deletes them, but it keeps the items for some reason. Why don't you delete this? Why? <laughs> that is so... Such a peculiar... I don't get it. Boom! Now let's see if it will actually explode. What happens when I did the item? Well, it does explode, and why is it not working? Destroy. It says destroy, and this destroys the item. What is the item? Is the UI I <gasps> okay, I get it now. Uh, game object, because I only destroy the component, but I don't destroy the object, so the object stays, but the logic is deleted, so that's kind of like pointless. So now it's gonna work first try. Yay, what's going on here? If I do this, will this fix itself? Oh boy, please don't tell me that. And I can no longer delete those. That's great. Oh, hold up. I know I know the cause. There we go. That's not good that it didn't update itself. Unless... Oh yeah, actually that makes a lot of sense. We can just do a little bit of this. I will fix all of our problems. Hopefully. Actually, I don't think it will, but... Yeah, I don't think it will, because if we were to, for example, let's say duplicate this thing on the bottom, then you'll see that we'll be met with disappointment when we delete this. See? That is a little bit annoying. Ha ha ha. Yeah, I'm a little bit unsure on how to update this. Unless we will also 
uh, I don't know, event system. Unity engine with event system. Or have there's like a way for updating the vertical resolution. Unity vertical group layout update. First you need layout update. Here we go. A layout rebuilder. Yeah, sure, this will definitely work. Ah, uh, it's just lovely, lovely, lovely. Huh. Actually, hold up. I might be saying this improperly. What is... Who are you? Define yourself. Vertical layout group. No, no, no. That's, that makes sense. Layout rebuilder. Yeah, but could you please like tell me where this is? UI. Okay. Yeah, that, actually that makes sense. Using Unity Engine.UI. Why did the music stop? YouTube stop being stupid. Layout rebuilder that force this thing uh what do you want from me uh what how am i supposed to know this in this script that is so incredibly stupid you don't even know You know what? It's a feature for now. We'll worry about that later. Label events. We'll now make a bunch of events. Well, uh, using Unity and Engine events. So now, whenever anything happens, you need to alert the listeners i guess a uh, string so when on value changed and public unity event on value up applied so this is when somebody tries editing but when he finishes editing this is when this triggers then we will also need to trigger unity event on on what on add element Public unity event string on remove element public unity event string on update or like on change I guess so on change will just be called here invoke so why am I doing this in strings that is so weird On value changed int and string. On value applied is also gonna be an int and string. Oh, but it's not gonna show up in the editor right with int and string. This is really annoying. Yeah, I just do it in, with an int. Int. We'll just uh, tell which thing was changed. Yeah. Lead item on remove element that invoke and you'll invoke it with this index. And here on value applied, no, on val uh, b -b 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 on add element. Hold up, what am I doing? On move element, I guess there should also be a separate callback for that. You cannot add one yet, but we'll fix that. You know what, screw it, I'm too lazy to do this, just on change, we'll just call this, we'll just call this here, like I would probably not even use all of these. 
Guys here, YouTube, could you please stop pausing my music? Where is it? For some reason, now YouTube will say, "Excuse me, are you are you are you sure you're actually you know watching YouTube because we do not want to serve you ads for well nothing." Thanks, YouTube. Delete items, and now we'll also add public void add item like add value, I guess. What this will do is cocaine. Mm -mm -mm. Values to add string dot empty update items. That is all it will do. Yep. Oh yeah, also we need to update uh, the text when you change anything in the file. Uh -huh -huh. Oh, this is going to be annoying, isn't it? So, I guess in here, on awake. Let's register like on, up, on, change, on value changed. Seriously? Okay, and in here we will need to... Oh, shut up. What are you doing? Stop this. Go away. Smash.dll. Fantastic. I fucked the jet boots on the second try this time. Wow! Deep Rock Galactic. Actually, we might play Deep Rock Galactic later. If only... Dragging is to be stopped because it's not yet complete. Stop now. I did not ask for it. I, I guess this is the reason why people use Notepad. Add the, va add the value, the value. We need to add the value. No, 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 hold up. I'm doing 20 things at once. If the value got changed. Public void update item. Our index will be equal items with index of item once again. And here we'll just scroll we'll just scroll your durable list dot uh, on change. That makes sense. Or actually we'll just we'll just make another method pri pri that void in Input on value changed string value. I will just call this thing instead of this one. Just make it neater. Oh, what do you want? Oh, okay. Add listener because we need to do this because this is unity and it's stupid. Once again, if the if the reordable list does not exist, we do not care. But if it does, then we say hey. We got our value changed on update item. Yeah, that will definitely not get confusing later. Mm -hmm. Values in the index would be equal item with input. Input the text. Pretty much it. And update items. Oh, we technically don't need. Or maybe we can just call it. No, nah, we're gonna do it. <laughs> Oopsie. Another thing. Add value. Uh, sure. This will work. No, shut up. Go away. Uh huh. Now, in the name. No, no, hold up. Uh, wrong thing. Locales. Header line. Yep, right here. We will add a new empty object once again. And we will make this an image. And we will make this a button. And we will make this a 
aspect ratio filter or height will control the width. I don't care. Uh, in here. There's gonna be a plus button, I guess, for now. Let's change it to this color too, because why not? It's for the sake of consistency. Twenty-five, and this one is of height. How much? Can I please? Oh, come on! This thirty. Add button. None, zero, and we will add right here. We will make it so that it will trigger add value. This will definitely work first try. Ah. Uh... What? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. No, it didn't. What do you mean? So this pretty much means that we've modified values, which we cannot do, except that we didn't. So what's your point here? Am I missing something? Am I being blind once again? Yes, I'm creating new item. I don't think this messes it up. It do oh, that's... No, we do not need that. It does, it does. Why do you keep turning on this mode? I do not care about debug mode. We need to set it without notifying or else we'll trigger like 27 different things. Please, shut down. I do not care. Wow, it still doesn't update. Wow, it still doesn't update. But if we go to manifest in uh, localis, <gasps> it updated here, which means we're technically feature ready. But there are missing icons, so let's fix that. <laughs> okay, so in the minus icon and the plus icon, which I have it, uh, a rister. Mm, project SL Magismo, uh, this one. Inkscape, stop being slow. I see that Twitch is going crazy, well that's fantastic. Okay, so yeah, this is just a file that I made for making all of these small little icons. Uh, here's the drop down icon, here's the check icon, and now it's make a new layer. We will call this uh, a minus, mini, which will literally be just a Thingy. <laughs> so how I do this is that I firstly uh, hold up. Can I? Can okay? Uh, can I? To for the sake of consistency. Well, I know I want this. To, I don't want it to go to path. Cusp node. Oh. Okay, sure. Now we will just change the width of it to to what? To, to this very strange number. Yay! And we will make this black, but uh, white shall it be? Then what I do is I duplicate this. Actually, hold up. Let me first reposition this in the center of the screen. We do not need you anymore, Mister Down. 
I, I duplicate this path and uh, I say stroke path. So currently, as you can see, it's just a path. It goes from A to B. But I will now make it just a simple square. So object stroke path uh, stroke path. And now if I select it, you can see it's a square. And since it's a square, now I can add an outline to it. And the outline will be exactly this strange number once again. I will add rounded corners. The things we do for UI design. But yeah, that's the that's the theme, like slightly rounded corners. That's how this application will work. And uh, let's change this color to something a little bit more pleasant. Blue, blue, yeah, badi badu badai. Yeah, sure. And now add the layer, it will be called uh, what was the other thing? Oh plus, of course. Plus. Why does uh, why is everything red? I don't get it. Hold up, no no no, I will make this yellow, it shall be. So uh here we will just completely ignore all of those steps that I did. We'll just copy this path from the minus and we will recenter it once again. And we will duplicate this path and just rotate it by 90 degrees. Physics. So now we can export this one by one, 256 by 256, as a PNG. We'll name this SRTM. I am exporting literal error. Export. The PNG, we'll call this SRTM minus. And then we'll just disable this and re-enable the plus. And we will export it as, instead of minus, it will be a plus. Instead of an SVG file, it will be a PNG file. Save. There we go. Here's our things that we're missing. Now, if we go to sprites UI and add these. Just go into settings and change this to 256. And uh, keep all the different things the same. Now... When we select the delete button, we will just change the little minus. Line stack tips. Uh, and the add button, first it will just needs to be slightly bigger. And we will make it a plus. Yeah. It worky like that. And that is gents how I've made something that barely works. <laughs> Nice. Huh, yeah, I still need to somehow figure out how to update this piece of garbage that I said. Actually, localize. Uh, can I get this here? And tell the content size fitter to somehow update. Like vertical layout group, like update. Set layout vertical. Okay, let's try that. Nope. Here. Nope. I still have a very janky solution to this problem. <sighs> As we just type in horizontal. Nope. Send message upward. Calculate input vertical. Well, you calculated garbage. Mm, so maybe horizontal. Nope. Uh, 
This is really annoying. Please, the Googles. Where is the Google? Help us. Uh, what am I doing? This is not code. Unity. Uh, force update. Uh, layout group. Ah, I see. Content size Twitter. Can update every frame. I do not care. Be, 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 be understanding. Oh, just shut up. Everybody keeps thinking this, but like, I do not want to select the rect transfer of the parent layout group. That is too long. And I think the sizing the object layout group will not work as you expect. In fact, it appears the opposite. Things that size, things that size, that is that is a sentence. The object includes layout element and content size fitter. For whatever reason, the default rect transform sizings make the layout group work opposite how you expect. What? Mm -mm -mm -mm. So, mm -hmm. element preferred height, minimum height. Nope. Flexible height. Nope. None of these do anything. I think they like specify like, oh, you need to, oh. Your child height. So if I say, oh, hold up. What am I doing? Will this do anything now? Let's just, let's just fit it with those. Oh boy. Hmm. Obviously, sometimes you've ruined it. Ah, why are you like this? Let's remove this name. Height. Why is it zero? What was it earlier? There you go. Holy garbage. This is a bug. Yes, in a nutshell. Yeah, this is just lovely. This is so incredibly stupid. First update canvas is fifth. Sure, we can try that. I don't think it will work. Canvas is fifth. I feel that like some kind of a script to update every single yeah, as you can see right here, it doesn't, it doesn't, yeah, now it worked. That is so strange, unless we had like a script to every single like vertical group, like, refresh, so we'll be able to just refresh it. Actually, now what I think that's what we will do. Like, this is so incredibly stupid. Unity CI is so incredibly stupid. I need to try out UI Builder, because it would be perfect for such a project, but that, that day isn't today. This needs to work, which it doesn't. Scroll view button uh, path. Layout group controller. That is a name. Project UI.
public static void refresh and pr private static ev event action we need to use system for this so pretty much whenever anybody ref uh, triggers the refresh thing it will fire this action so on awake for every single one of these we'll just we need to register to this action this will be called on 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 off uh on refresh so yeah when somebody refreshes we'll just invoke this method and then everybody subscribed to it will say hey i am awake i have i have awoke awoken myself void uh handle refresh oopsie that's a bit too much on refresh dot uh, plus equals this. There you go. And now, handle refresh. What will we do is use whatever that garbage was we found out earlier. So we need the engine of the UI layout layout group dot force now layout rebuilder dot force rebuild immediate. We will kill, now have a serializable field of a layout group target. And when we add this script, we'll automatically just try finding this component. So, to prevent any, like, you know, to, to make sure that we don't forget about this target. What do you want for me? Oh, well, it has to be a rect transform. Sure. Sure. There I go. Seems like a really simple script, but hopefully it will fix our, all of our problems. And we go here, instead of doing whatever this is, we will just call layout group con con controller dot refresh. Lovely. So, if we go to content right here and we add this, it will work first try. So, look carefully in on this window if this uh, thing won't expand when I add the. Why? Oh, I guess we need to wait for this and... You now what? Screw it. Uh, var new size. And if new size is not equal to... Nice tool. I am in pain. This transform dot... I want to be a QA tester now. I've made yesterday like a very terrible version, but yeah, it's not ready yet. <laughs> There's nothing to test. There's only things to fill out. <laughs> so if these things aren't the same, then sad. And here we will just set the new size. So instead of forcing the update in here, we will force it in here. Oopsie. Backend exited with code 1. I'm so happy with this information. Still doesn't work. Why? Why don't you work? That's so incredibly dumb. Uh, you know your API is amazing when people write things like this. Like, what is this? Calculate input vertical. Oh, shut up. Because also in here. 
canvas.update first update canvases I'm getting annoyed so much Unity's UI is so crap Like, what did even happen here? You see this garbage. Oh, but when I, I add another one, then it updates for the previous one that I'm missing. Wait, that, what? Eh, okay, I know. So, theoretically, if I do this here, it will work. Hold up, can we just get rid of this horrible script? No! We in fact can't, but I think we can get rid of this. And we can write this in a way like uh, this. Uh, changed and all of this will be moved here so if it's this changed then we will change it changed so if it is changed then we do this that's it that's all the code so now when you will see in here in this window right here if i add an item it will actually expand because Unity normally doesn't do that because it wants to serve it save on resources. See? Simple. I'm a genius. <laughs> so I keep explaining this, this this will turn into a scrollable thing. It's exactly what we wanted. Exactly. Holy garbage. I'm so happy. We've done it. So now we save this manifest inspector. This will be called a, or actually, prefab UI basic, and you will name this reorderable list. Save this rename file. Okay, and by default, it will have a width of three hundred like. 500 and a height of yeah sure look at this it looks so nice it looks so beautiful 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 uh actually i think i can move the plus button by a little bit for the sake of sanity minus 10 yeah and i think i can also move this anchor by a little bit by 10 by 20 by 30 by 40 uh, sure yay this is what we call a job well done Something is bugging me. Uh, template. As per usual. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now we can just... This remains as locales. And we can finally upload this. Upload. List. Or reorderable. list added reorderable list and i'll do it's garbage there we go now i want to make a 
Actually, what do I want to make? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure because currently how it uh, the application works, I can show you. Uh, main right panel container scroll view viewport content. So by default, this, this the, the, the application will look like this. Is it gonna make it a little bit bigger for you? Yeah, so you will be able to move around this, but we, you can't for now, and that's not that important. But you can select different uh, fields, and you can type in like janitor. And yeah, it will, like so you see, if I select sciences, it will clear this. If I, the way I want it, if I select janitor, it will say janitor. But there are things like, for example, the manifest file. That is not the manifest file. Where did I lose the manifest file? Browse local files. If we go to English, you can see that there's a file called manifest, a special file containing a lot of information, like me metadata, met me metadata, blah, blah. I still, I'm still watching this stream, congratulations. So yeah, like, when do we, where do we specify English, where do we specify authors? So I wanted to have a separate, like, uh, if you were to select something somewhere in here, this window, would change to like you see this window right here it would change to this so it would have the name which would be the the name which in this case would be english default yeah and here you would have for example different locales locals locals interface locals and other locals But the question is, how do we make this thing appear? And I'm not talking about logically, how do we code this in, but what do we have to do in this application to select this field, to select the manifest field? Like, I, we can either add a manifest field right here, which I think we're gonna do, because I do not have any other idea how to do this. Author's operation guide. Actually, let's see, how, how, how do I do my manifest for the operation guide? Operation guide, authors, operation guide. Yeah. C001. What is 007? Also, I'm not sure how. Uh, this works first font order because I think you can change the font in your translation. So, for example, if you simplified Chinese, COVID, of course. If you simplified, uh, if you, for example, you simplified Chinese, you can change the font. I'm not sure how this works actually. It would be cool if there was, but yeah, I, I think we'll just give it as a simple list, although I want to make this as intuitive as possible. Operation guide. This is broken. English. Operation guide. I love the operation guide. Uh, so, for example, for the HID sign, instead of having this window, you will just have a window with uh, uh, this list. Because this, like, every, like for example, normally this, it will contain things like micro HID storage. Hold up, it needs to be capitalized. HID storage, nothing. Authorized personnel only. So yeah, uh, instead of having just one field for all of this, it will be separated into this. I mean, figure, yeah, I will need to make it so that depending on the thing is selected, it will display something different in here. But that doesn't exist yet. And we will work on that. So I guess firstly, or maybe not. Yes, I was thinking first we should figure out how to make the manifest file appear here, but I think this, I think this, 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 HID sign, hmm. If coding it is always like this, it looks simple, but it will take a lot of, a lot of years from your lifespan to make it working without bugs. Everything works first try with me, do not worry. It's starting to look really good. Uh, let's, let's change it to full screen, or maybe even 4K. Quad HD, oh that is too small, I'm sorry. 
I will probably like, oh oh uh, sorry I didn't show you this. So, for example, let's say you want to import something. It opens uh, on a random folder. It's just dependent on Windows. But I wanted to make it so that uh, it would open in the translations folder. So, for example, for me it would be uh, this location. So how do we do that? Because like we can try automatically detecting this, but it's not gonna get us that far. But maybe we can add like preferences. That's exactly what I did. Look at this, it's so cool. How did you learn to code? Miroslav Zeland. <laughs> okay, uh, it's like when I want... Uh, I always wanted to like computer things, but I always thought it was out of reach. And then like uh, when I would try to persuading my parents into buying me some kind of like fun Lego toy. Uh, Okay, so our beloved mirror subsident, of course. Yeah, I wanted to have like a toy that you can connect things and make code with that, and it was doing like integrated with a smartphone and with Minecraft. You could download, you could actually download a mod for uh, that. It will make it work with Minecraft, but uh, because uh, you know, two thousand, I don't know what year that was, like two thousand fifteen, and uh, Poland. They just uh, said like, no, we do not have money for this because it costed. A whopping 60 grand. 60. It seems funny, but all Poland. And they said, if you want to code, then just learn how to code. And I was just like... Oh. So that's the what I did. I just searched up how to code and I found Miroslav Zeland, which... I was just like a tutorial on how to make things in C++. So I started making my own C++ applications. Yeah, I started learning that and pretty much after I was able to m write my own things, I started making like applications, calculators, because of course, and even a game, which a lot of my friends called the Password Simulator, but uh, yeah, I made a TXT game. But then I tried to, doing Unity, but Unity was always kind of out of reach because tutorials at the time were crap, especially if you were a young Polish boy that didn't understand English that well. You also sent which posts with Damian Stelman videos on a channel called Passia. Yes, Passia Informatica. He's still doing it. Yeah, that's that is just like an old YouTube channel that used to teach a lot of people on how to code. Uh, yeah, actually, fun fact: my IT teacher uh, in uh, high school like just said, "Okay, if you don't understand anything, just watch this Miroslav Zeland video." If you are to recommend it, uh, would it be easy for anyone? You mean Miroslav Zeland? I mean, I think there are better tutorials out there right now, but. I learned how to code in C++. I did not understand Unity. So, I tried. I tried downloading it, which, by the way, downloading Unity back in the day with my internet took me actual three days of non-stop work on my computer. I had to leave my computer on for three days and convince my parents not to shut it down. Uh, but I was unable to figure out anything and throw their crap. But then, on Udemy, there was this course uh, that I got for really cheap. Uh, that taught you how to code in Unity. So, and what was cool about it, it didn't say like, oh, this is the this is the game window, uh, this is the inspectors, this is the scene, this is the hierarchy, this is how you add. No. It said, follow these steps, we will code now. And that's all we did. We just coded. And I managed to code things in the console right here. And, you know, after, after that, I started just... In, in that course, I started following it. Now, I added like visual things on the screen. And I've made like a uh, weird Tetris game or something. And I did that tutorial and started working on my own crap and I was so incredibly stupid. Like for example, you see how I, for example, all of these items right here. Like th they use the same scroll view button script. And I, I didn't think, I didn't think you can actually use uh, multiple instances of this. So I would just copy them and paste. So, so I would have scroll view button 1, scroll view button 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 28. Follow these steps, we will code. Well, it's basically like building a Lego set with instructions. Actually, hold up. Text to speech Twitch. I, why, I, why do I not have it en enabled? I don't know. Okay, someone tried speaking on something. Say! I'll say it for you. 
Waiting for channel name. Start listening. Okay, now. G. G. Interesting. <gasps> okay. I have text to speech. Uh, yeah, and from that... Oh, that looks interesting. Yeah, from that point I just continued working, uh, coding, I've made a couple of games, I've even participated in game jams, and here we are today. Yeah. Text to speech can be risky, cause some people might try to cancel you. I know. By posting racist things. Nah, I can just close it, like it's, it's just a button away. Like when people want to, I don't want to call it trolling because it's really not, but if people just want to be annoying, they will find a way. Also, like you can just select it here, and uh, I love this. I was Thank you for following, Mister. <laughs> if I read your name correctly. You are not showing up in the activity feed. Also, you are. Ouch. Hold up! No, hold up. Honestly, closer than some people. I see, guy. Okay, sorry. I thought it was a bunch of gibberish, so I thought it was broken. Hello, I know that you exist. I don't really watch you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I see closer than some people. Yeah, that's that's that fair. fair so this is the translation tool, which is which will be a tool for translating translations and updating translations and. Fun thing, I don't. Incredible. I was gonna do something interesting. Oh yeah, we were uh, we were gonna figure out how to select the different instances of this. Entry inspector, manifest inspector. So this we'll need to rename this because in currently translations defines we have uh, hold up wrong wrong thing. We have multi line entry translations, which is something like let's say for example. Like this file. I watched quite a few of your vids and saw you were streaming, so decided to stop by. Yeah, so they were not streaming a set. They were streaming being boring and coding. So I'm making like a translation tool. So a multi-line entry, which is, is something like this. So there's this is one entry, this is second entry, this is third entry. So there are multiple entries in one file. But there's also like things like, for example, the HID sign, which is a array entry, meaning that it's an array of different. It's like a single entry, but it's an array. Nuke silo sign, yeah, alpha warhead silent keeps looping on the sign. So, now, this is not an entry, this is a uh, multi-entry inspector. Like, si single entry inspector and we'll duplicate it and call this an array entry inspector. Yeah! Instead of having an input field, uh, please disable yourself. Instead of having this, we will instead have the... We will have a this. That's the wrong thing. Uh, we will have a this. Yay. And in here, we will call this... Instead of labor... I was not here when you started making this tool. Are you doing this for yourself? Or were you asked no. paid to do it? What? Or really or were you ask paid? No, I'm doing this for yourself and for the community because we love communism on this channel. Uh header. Instead of label it will be called uh, What will it be called? T content? Content. Content, I guess. Hashtag best doc. Yeah. I am actually like I have a problem with money. Or more like I don't, and that's the problem. Like I do not understand the concept of earning money like i don't know how to earn money because th there have been so many instances in my life where i was able to make money and i said no i'm actually scared of making money that is funny all of all the things i do is are free which are which is stupid like qa six should be paid all i'm saying all of this all this cool fancy window you have in here map editor this should why is it not loaded 
I am mentally preparing for my 12 hour shift on Saturday. I work with bouncy castles. That's interesting. Uh, actually, hold up. We could make a shortcut. Oh, that'll be interesting. Let's test out the new QASIC feature shortcut. Save. Now, keyboard. For saving, it will be Ctrl and S. Uh, left con control S Huh Wait so how I mean why am I asking this question I know how it will work But Now if we go to translation man manager And you will add using qwasic.input We will be able to go in here Uh, 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 label uh, shortcuts serial serialize field and if we type in input reference save or like I do it I save so this this just basically means this is an input this is input this is an input reference uh, yeah I'm not sure I would recommend that but that's what I do and on update update we will just check that if uh down yeah so if this button gets pressed down we will save hopefully don't want light and fire save oh boy this is this looks ugly what what happened here what happened? Why is there so much space? QA6 stop breaking every 5 nanoseconds. Save. So now, theoretically, if I press Ctrl S, it will save. <sighs> or is it. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is the file format. Gentlemen, gentlemen, I did it. Oh, this is so cool. Like Ctrl A. Should Ctrl I be import? If you are doing project by yourself, if it works, it works. If others work with you on project, just do documentation explaining the variables and stuff. Yeah, uh, like I want to make this, make sure like this thing will be updated in the future and will not break. Uh, save. Load. How, what's the load shortcut? Is there a load shortcut? Is like a universal load shortcut? Control O, I guess, for, for opening. I guess load will be a shortcut. Uh, not this one. Actually, one thing I want to do in QA6 is like power expression, so you can say like... Uh, this is just an example, this, this doesn't work. But, in the future, hopefully, you will be able to say like... Im import... Then do this... Left con control... I... And then when you press enter, it will automatically fill out every single... Field, I guess, but that doesn't work yet. So we need to do that manually. Export. Okay, so the load shortcut will be con yeah, con control left control and O for open because I think that's the actually. Let's see how Notepad does it. <gasps> would you look at that? Uh, import keeper. Oh yeah, left control and I. And exporting will be left, left control, and E. Yeah, that's the that's the standard. So now, if we go in here once again, copy this a bunch of times. We just need to specify the shortcut for loading, importing, and exporting. If I load, let get input down. So if somebody triggers that input, we will load. If someone will trigger the import uh, thing, then we will import the import shortcut. And if someone will trigger the export shortcut, then we will export. Actually, let's let's try populating all of the things I uh, because if you weren't present in the last stream, I've managed to implement every single field in the items class. That is not the items class. 
But yeah, you can see Kikar Janitor. Why is it? What is going on? Oh, no, this should not happen. In QAC, this should not happen. I forgot to satisfy it here, but this should not happen. Thanks, QAC. I still, I still seem to fix QAC. That's my life's motto. So. Oh, that's that wasn't QAC. Okay, then. Uh... <gasps> okay, that makes sense. There we go. Uh, b -b 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 oh boy, hold up, I need to, I need to, okay, okay. Oh boy, oh boy, okay. So this is all empty, but you can see I, I've managed to implement every single one of these fields. So we have inventory FSP9 and things. So if we now press Control i Oh, why did you open it here? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Here, this is English. If we select this folder, suddenly, FSP9 is FSP9. Epsilon 11 is Epsilon 11. Hold up, let me maximize this. 268 is... Yeah, you can even see the description. Even the micro HID sign should load properly. It loaded properly. And now... If I export it, I mean, there's no point, but yeah, it, it works, it works. Oh my gosh, that is, that is cool, that is cool. <laughs> and now we shall upload our changes. Poggers. Upload shortcuts, added shortcuts. Yeah. We are as per usual, so now we need to change how the inspector works, because currently, as you can see, uh, I just need to manually trigger what type of it is, it, uh, what type it is. So, theoretically, like, we have three different inspectors right here, a single entry inspector, array inspector, and manifest is inspector, but I think we should have one inspector and then, like, different inspection components. That makes sense, because currently it's just one, three, it's three of them. Instead of this reflecting like, hey, uh, please notify me when uh, something gets selected. This should not receive that information. There should be a different component receiving that information. And then deciding which one of these panels it should open. Yes, yes, of course. I have no idea what's happening. You just need to smoke a lot of weed to get straight with me. Okay. Uh, Data you UI. Got it. Inspector. I can understand most of it. Well, then con consider yourself a smart individual or someone that needs help. Uh, Project.ui just need. Emphasis on most. Yeah, we need to hide this in here. And now, what we need to steal code. That's what we do. Every day I wake up, I steal code. That is, that is actually what I do. Yeah, I just don't know much coding, but I find it interesting. Imagine like I'm Hubert Moshka, and I'm about to make SCPSL2. I'm so Polish, I said Moshka, and not Moska, Morzytska. Like, as some people say. Uh, manager. Oh, don't do that. Manage. Okay, so. When the application starts, we will tell the manager, Manager, tell us your wisdom. Hubert Moska made some horrible crimes when making the S, but oh well. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Most of it was fixed. <laughs> like, SL, we are currently at SL7, probably. This game has been written from the ground up so many times, it's ridiculous. Overwatch just come out copying the game and pasting it in and telling, oh, it's a sequel. Esther is still sitting at version 1 for some reason. I, I, don't, I don't understand, Norfolk. Content field. I do not care about this. Maybe I do. Overwatch 2 has over 150 negative comments. As per usual. Uh, um, entry list. So... We will need to make uh, inspector display and inspector display panel component. Uh, 
So basically, every single like inspector panel. So depending on the things you select, depending on the things. Hello, welcome to chat. Depending on what you select, the different panels will trigger, and all of these panels will uh, derive from this special class. And because this uh, class won't be used on its own, or maybe it will. Eh, you know what? Screw it. Uh, mono be let's mark it as a mono behavior because we want it to be. We want to have the ability to attach it to an object. Uh, what is this garbage? Project. Project that you are inspector display panel. So, so, uh -huh. uh, public this panels. So we will store in our inspector display, in our main inspector, we will store a reference to every single panel and then we will just switch the one that we need, depending on the, well, the thing that we need. So in here, we just need to add a component like, for example, on select. What is this garbage? Or like on enable, on enter, or on display, on open, on, op on open, does that make sense? Yes, how do we name the action that that when you when we select something and we open the inspector? Or, or I guess it's open on enable, but on enable is already taken. On open, on use, on show up, I don't care. On select? I mean, technically. Virtual void. So we will trigger this method every single time we switch the panel or. The selection change. Oh, I guess on selection change. On awake, on start, on initialize. I don't care. Initialize. Initialize. Okay, we have found it. Why did you stop, Mr. Splatoon soundtrack? YouTube, stop doing this. I am listening to Chill Garbage. <laughs> Manager. <clears throat> In context, what is co this? <gasps> Absolutely nothing. Nobody cares. Okay, great. I die, Miko. Gaming is calling me. This is truly so sad. For its uninitialized. So when we open the panel, it will trigger this. If we close the panel, or if we select something else, then it will close this. Then it will call this. So on selection change, we'll have like a var. Uh, uh, int current panel. Which will be equal to minus one. Display panel current panel. Oh, this will be the index, and we will make this fancy little fella. That basically, depending if panels. Oh, uh, hold up! Using QASIC because of course, index in range. So, if the panel of this index exists, we will return it. But if it doesn't, well then, we don't. Simple. Enough, I think, I hope. I hope. Manager. On selection change. Manager. So, when the selection changes, and something new gets selected, if... Try... Well, if this is not equal to null, meaning that there is, in fact, an opened panel, we'll just tell this panel to uninitialize itself and hide itself. And then we will set this panel... Actually, I don't think we need to do that. We can just do it in here, or... No, we will do it in here. We'll just hide this panel, because we do not need it anymore. And entry ID. We need to change how this is... Okay, so let me explain. So, how it works currently is that in this panel, this panel displays every single uh, list of every single entry. But on top of the different entries, I want to also have like a special uh, one for the manifest, which manifest is this file just that just specifies a bunch of metadata for the translation. But, ha like, it looks for the... Oh, actually, maybe we can do that. Uh, this is really confusing. But yeah, pretty much every single time the selection changes, it tells us the current entry ID. But what, if it, but what if that thing is in an entry? What if we're editing something that is in an entry? What if we just want to show like a fun little message on the right panel? Like... We need to do something. 
So how do we define what we have selected currently? As I don't, unless like because we need to look at the transition manager because huh ha 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 <laughs> yeah, I am not sure, but we need to somehow like define what we're selecting. I guess maybe we can go with the instead of this being an entry ID, we'll just call it an ID of some sort. And we'll just need to make sure that there aren't duplicates, so yeah now what we will we will uh, roll with, with it. Yeah. That sounds like a great idea. Now when we close our current panel, we need to figure out what open shall we, uh, what panel shall we open. And to figure it out, well, we need to uh, figure it out. So, first, uh, yeah, uh, we will need to. We have the manager here. So, if this ID right here is for a translation entry, that is a multi-line translation, which is once again something like this. So every single line is a different entry. Then we will display the entry uh, panel. But if, for example, it's the nuke side, though, we will display... Because you can see, it's like an array. You can add infinite amount of these. It, it doesn't matter. Then we will trigger a different entry. It will trigger this entry. And if it's something else, then we will trigger another entry. So to do that, we need to see if like the normal entries, the single line entry, contain... That entry, that ID that we currently have. If they do, we will enable the single entry inspector. If they don't, then we will check for the array, array entries. If they contain the entry that we're currently viewing. If they do, then we will enable this inspector. But if they don't, then we will just enable nothing. Except, like, for example, in this specific case, if this will be a manifest. If this will be a manifest, then we will have this specific inspector. So, yeah. Makes sense? <laughs> I hope it does. I hope it does. And how do we figure it out? Actually, we can write it right in here. That will make a lot more sense. So, smile. Smile, exactly. So this panel, this is where we will write the code for every single panel. So right in here, we can just write the code. So we'll make this a virtual bool. Is compatible. Like, this, this is the method that will check if this panel should open currently should oh oh blah, 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 pen should open sure return false by default because well currently we have nothing we currently have no code so we just need to return something or this is gonna be really sad now we can make a or actually we do not need to make we have the entry inspector right here. This will derive from this class right here. As I like saying. We can delete this because it's not needed anymore. And we will comment this and worry about it later. So we will comment this and worry about this later. So in here we will overwrite the can should open. And this is for the single entry inspector. So uh, this is for for example a file like items yeah so the way we define it is that we need the manager we need the reference to the manager which we do not have but we should uh, hold up using project.translation defines okay uh, oh actually no manager manager so every single panel on awake, we will look for every single panel. And we will just add this manager here. So, item plus manager will be, uh, will be called manager. And we will just hide this in the inspector because we do not need it. So, now we need to ask the manager for the current uh, translation version or the version of the different meta metadata. Like, wh what translation version we are currently using so to do that we'll do to manager dot current version var version and now that version will contain every single file and then we will need to locate files of type that i forgot multi-line 
entry. So, target, or like, target files, I guess. My small heart, why are you doing this to me? Thank you for joining the party. I, I literally, I cannot see anything. Hold up, let me check this here. Mr. Myth, thank you for following, but then entire chat now hates you and my heart is sad. Manager. Um, I'm, I'm being drunk. Version. Defines. So this will be just, this is like a list of every single file. 10, 10 out of 10 follow sound. sound. Yeah. Me jump as well. So this is, uh, what am I doing here? Yeah, this is a list of every single file, and then we just want to find all of the files of type of type that are multi-line, that are multi-entry, multi-line entry, using system.link.linkq, which is a neat library that will allow us to do this quite easily. So we just say, hey, select... What is going on in here? Linkq, where? Yes, yeah, select the thing where... Actually, hold up, I need to go for a quick minute. Okay, we are Barak. I'm surprised the camera, ha the, 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 the uh, camera hasn't died. So we just say select the verge, uh, the file that is of type multi line entry, something like that. But to do that, we need using project that translation that defines multi entry translation defines. Yeah, and then we will be able to get all of the different entries. So, entries, or I guess in this case they are called the defines. So, defines. Because an entry is a thing that also contains information, but this only defines the entry. So, defines target uh, files dot select many, because we will select many of these, because those targets, all of them have different things. <laughs> I'm going to go deaf on the stream. X dot uh, def uh, get defines. So this will return a list of every single like entry, the the entry that we can define. And yeah, and now we just need to check like, hey, Mister Ver, uh, slowed up. Should open. Oh boy, I am stupid. Should open. Should also have a string ID here. But it doesn't. So this is the ID. So we'll just check. Hey, defines. If you contain the ID, well, we just return this. So if you contain the ID, well, we, we should open. But if you do not contain the ID, then that we are not the panel for to edit this file. So go away. As you can see, I just laid it out nicely for you so you can actually read this. But this is how I would do it personally. So we do it like this. The magic of LinQ is that when you understand it, you can just write something like this. And it's a lot more simpler. Except when it isn't. There you go. It's just four lines. That, that is the beautiful thing about LinQ. All that logic that I just explained, it all happens here. And it is quite readable if you know what you're looking at. Okay. So now, when we're trying to open the panel and trying to find the panel, we'll just loop through every panel. Oh, yeah. Var panel in panels. And when we will check, panel should open. If it should not open, well, then we do not care. But if it can open, then we will say, hey, our current panel, or our current ID, oh boy, this is gonna be confusing. Current panel index will be equal panels.index of panel. What? Mm, 
this is stupid array system.array.index of because it's an array we need to do this stupid thing so yeah uh, we'll try get, we'll set the, uh, the panel that we've managed to find that it should open right now we'll set it as the current panel and because now it's set as the current panel we can just say initialize and it will set it active game object set active true so theoretically yes theoretically it should work that's what i'm saying however everything in this channel works first try so i'm sure it will work uh inspector display now manager is this thing and now this is the single entry inspector which is right here we will name entry inspector in visual studio because now it's not just a single entry inspector it's a specific inspector for multi-line entries so it will be called multi or like single entry or wait hold up just entry inspector and there will be entry array inspector oh yeah that, 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 that yeah that makes actually perfect sense well then uh inspector panels so the single entry inspector will have the entry inspector and then here we just assign this panel right here so theoretically nothing should change in best case actually no it will kind of not work but it will show up in here see but if i type in something right here doesn't care because we deleted all of the logic or more likely we've commented all of the logic out so we need to fix that shall we also i do not have the index for the current id which is not great so once again in here we will add this helper hide in inspector public I guess it should be pro protected. So protected means that we can only see this inside of this file. And even if we derive from this file, we can also see that. But outside of the file, this is... Never mind, I'm stupid. We need to see that outside of the file because we need to assign it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Public string ID. So when we enable the panel, first when we uninitialize the panel, We'll just set this to string.empty. But when we initialize it, and current panel dot id will be equal to, 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 to the id. So now we can simplify this code. Selected item is an equal null and manager file entries contains key. Like we do not care about this. Just here contains the if it contains the id that we've currently selected or actually we don't even need to worry about this yeah we do not know we do we absolutely do not so yeah that is all that is all that's it that's all the code and now it should one second work so if i select an item i type in the text and then i change it it should change if it doesn't then it sucks also the camera is dying so that's fantastic crap but if I'm not mistaken, it actually edits that, but it doesn't reset. And it doesn't reset because we need to use the methods un oh, right. uh, uninitialized. So we actually need to add the logic here when the window gets uninitialized. So when the window gets uninitialized, we just kind of need to clean up things. And then when it gets initialized, we need to populate it with the things that we need. That makes sense. So, content field text set without notify. So, when we initialize, we will just clean everything. So, it will look like we never added anything. But when we initialize, then of course, we will try to populate it with the current thing. So, we will need to say manager, get me the list of all of the. Wait, what? Yeah, file and cherries. Oh, actually, you know what? Screw it. I actually need to check if... 
actually need to check uh, in case the file got corrupted so i need to check this uh, but yeah file entries uh, hold up if manager.file.entries contains key id then we will just set it to the value content id so now when you initialize we will set the value that's currently loaded in the file and we will load it in the input field on the right so if you're right again now if i select the scientist key card and type in scientist and i set something else yeah, it will change, but if I go back, it will change to scientist once again. We are incredible at this job. Except that currently, as you can see, everything seems to work. Except, as you remember, we've just coded only one panel. So if we go to something more complex, like for example, HID sign, it disappears. Because there's no logic for it. It is not a single line entry, it's an array entry, and it requires its own separate inspector that we currently not have. Don't have, sorry words. So, to do that, to fix this, we're going to make a new inspector. Array entry inspector. Right here. Also, I changed my mind. Entry inspector will now be called single entry inspector. Yes, rename it. Uh, uh, oh, please don't tell me it's opened here. Okay, we can just close this because we don't care anymore. Now, for the sake of organization, I'll just add this here, translation.ui. And you'll overwrite our panel class, uh, in inspector. Where is it? Project.ui, that's so incredible, actually that makes sense. I do not care. I will clean this project later, off stream, because that is too boring. Oh, there we go, camera dive. Lovely. So, allow me to turn on my random PNG that will jump. <laughs> uh, it's this piece of garbage. Okay, in a few seconds you will see Mr... I don't know, I, it does not have a name. Hello! So, array inspector uh, panel, inspector display panel. So... Once again, we need to overwrite should open. And this time, we'll do something quite similar to the single line entry inspector that we did previously. Except that this time we are not looking for multi-entry translation files but array tr translation files. So we can just copy this entire code and replace this thing right here. Oh, sorry, we need to add this. We need to add a link queue for it to work. And then in here, hold up, unit uh, using project.translation that defines array translation defines. So if we add this component now, Everything should work. Hopefully. Maybe. Probably. I hope so. Array entry inspector. Currently it will absolutely do not do anything, but it will show up. So let's test our game theory. Let's make MatPat proud. <gasps> it's working. Incredible. As you can see, HID sign shouldn't say A, B, C, D, E, 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 so now let's actually call it the logic to populate this thing and then get rid of this thing. So, we will need to use this dandy thing I've made, serialized field, which was called, I believe, a reorderable list UI. Oh, boy. Uh, entry, or like content list yeah that makes sense so when this thing gets opened and we just need to add logic for when it's not opened so when it gets opened this thing will have to be populated with the id content list uh, uh, uh. 
Okay, how does this work? Values. Okay, so we need to create new. Okay, okay, I'm I'm starting to understand how this works again. I hope so. Probably. So content list dot values will have to be equal to 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 to. To what? Well, first we need to actually load the entry. How do we do it in the single line entry? Manager dot okay. So if manager manager dot file the entries contains key ID because if if it doesn't contain the key then we can't really load anything. And var var oh actually yeah no I'm right var manager Entry manager.file.entries ID and now values will have to be equal to this dot content except we will have to split it. Oopsie. We will have to split it by new line because that's how SL operates. If I can show you uh new side assign, uh, all of this is this symbol right here between alpha and warhead. This is a new line, which says, well, to start a new line. And in programming, for some reason, we specify it as this thing. As it's a special symbol, do not, do not question. And because this is an array and not a list, or actually we can use lean queue once again, because I love lean queue. We can just say to list. Oh, it's so cool. Yeah, and if we un 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 uh, uninitialize our manager, then just manager.file.entries. Oh, sorry, uh, I'm doing this wrong. Content list of values that clear. Or it will be. Oh, actually, I cannot clear that. Oh, I did not f think this through today. Wait, so ah, uh, you know what? I'll fix it later. Yeah, we'll just make it a new list. Don't 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 worry about it. Mm mm mm. Yep. But now we need to write logic for when this actually gets changed. So content list dot on change. Shut up. Oh, it will not generate it automatically. So uh -uh -uh. We, this will be here. Private void this. So this will be triggered every single time something changes. Or sorry, I guess I need to add, add a listener because this is Unity's garbage. So whenever something changes there, we will need to update the entry. Content list dot values. Or sorry, if manager dot file dot entries contains key ID manager dot file dot entries. ID that content will be equal. I hope I can do that. <laughs> Let's hope I can do that. Will be equal. Will be equal. Content ID on change. <laughs> will be equal to the reorderable. Reorder. Hold on. Let me write this code and I will explain it later. Holy garbage! Content list dot values. So what this does is that entries are saved as a single line of text, not an array, but this is an array. So how do we save it? Once again, we need to convert it, we need to join it together with this. So we say string.join, which well, joins all of the different entries with a new line symbol. And then we specify the values and there you go. So theoretically, this should work first try after we assign this. Mm, mm, mm yeah. Oh, and actually, because this will not be cleared out first, zero. We need to specify that this is... We need to clear this out because it's not going to be cleaned at first. So, now, technically, if I scroll all the way to over here, so the HID sign, it will do absolutely nothing because object is not set to an instance of an object in here. Why?
What? What is it supposed to mean? Is it saying that this thing is not... What's mean? What? Okay, this is confusing. Let's test it out again. Yeah, this sometimes is weird. Null. What do you mean it's null? It's an action. It's a string. Or I get... Oh. I get it. Okay, so pretty much. If we make the new class, I think it will just reset it to null because by default it should just be empty. But it's null. <laughs> My small heart, stop doing this. We are actually going to get me a heart attack at the end of the stream. Thank you, Joseph, for following. <laughs> okay, so this should fix all of our problems. <laughs> Some of you are capturing when there is a hot control. That's my favorite error of all time. There's absolutely nothing. There you go. I have no idea why there are two of them. Wait, what ha happened here? Why are, why are the... This is empty. Oh. This is getting really confusing. Okay, uh... Oh, suddenly it's one. It suddenly doesn't throw any errors. What is going on? Hold up, hold up. Replay, replay. It's two. Now it throws an error. Now it's one. Now it's zero. Now it's one. Now it's zero. Now it's one. What is this supposed to mean? What happens? Let's assess the situation. Uh, currently, this has only one value, which is oxygen. And yet, we have two of these. But why? Why are there two? Explain. What happens if I delete it? Absolutely nothing. It's like a ghost item. It gets created but never gets added. But why? Like, does it get created twice in here somewhere? This is the only... Yeah, this is the only place where it gets created. But every single time an item here gets created, it gets added here. So it doesn't make any sense. Why didn't I have a problem with that earlier? Hmm. Let's say, for example, that we will not initialize this. Oh, no. And let's say that we will just completely Ignore update items. For now. We'll just go one by one and we'll figure it out. Okay, it creates nothing. But if I were to re-add this thing. Oh boy, just please work. Why are you like this? Currently, if it's empty, it's gonna create one item because, like, it's still treated as, as something. You see, it creates one item, and that item, if I delete it, I cannot delete it, it's a ghost item. It's a ghost item, I cannot delete it. 
Wait, but also, yeah, why why does it create oh no hold up, it makes sense for it to create. No wait a second, no it doesn't. Currently values are set to zero. Why does that file get created? Why why does that instance get created? Value in values. How many times does this will get triggered? Once. But wait, but should it? I mean, I think it should, maybe. I think there could be a understood way, but no, that this is really confusing. Okay, so firstly, when this gets changed, an update will just trigger debug blood updated items. So, because theoretically, it should first initialize, then update the items. It shouldn't do the other way around. But it does the other way around, meaning that we get a ghost item. It changes the values. It has all of the things, but then it adds additional ones. Wait, but oh yeah, it adds additional items, so there's a discrepancy. So it kinda of doesn't know what to do, but then it later figures out. Okay, so we just need to say hold your horses. This is gonna be like a temporary value. Then it's gonna set, be set to false, and once we initialize everything, it will be set to true. So we'll just kinda prevent the rest from the game run. Uh, what has happened? We're just gonna prevent uh, the rest of the code uh, from running before this thing gets initialized. Uh, blah, 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 blah. If in it, if it's not initialized. Just don't care. Don't execute this code. Now it should work. Now it sh the list should be empty. Or no, it should ha only have one item. It works. I can delete it. And I can add one. I can add multiple. I can deselect it and oh boy. I had so many problems with this. Oh, it has problems removing them, I think. Wait, but I was able to remove them, so what's the point? What's the deal? Why? Hold up. What does this? Create new item. It does absolutely nothing else. Yeah, I can delete it. I can, I can remove it. That's no problem. Or is it a problem to the application? Remo remove up this item. Triggers this, but somehow when I s make it, I change it to zero. It stops. Hold up, hold up. Oh, I actually might have an idea, maybe. Okay, so imagine values that count everywhere is equal to zero. If zero is bigger than this will never trigger. If zero is smaller than the items that count, it will be smaller. So for every we start from zero up to the maximum amount. Okay, so that makes sense. Wait, hold up. If I'm getting this correctly, if I just add if items to val dot count like values items that count will be bigger than zero so if the connections i think this first for a single single time even when it is empty because it checks it on like this condition gets met only after it triggers so firstly it sets it to zero it runs the entire code then it checks if it should run again and then it increases it or more like it's increase no no, no that, that that's the correct way so 
Yeah, code get executed somewhere in here. Meaning that it didn't check this. Meaning that it's still fired for a single time. Which it can't because it's empty. Okay. So I can add multiple... No. It's not the case. Okay, let's check both of these. Maybe I will maybe maybe we'll be able to figure something out. I said remove this because it's starting to get annoying. Should not be capturing when there's a hot control. What's that supposed to mean? Uh H A sign. Okay. Zero and zero. So it worked this time. Four four. That's two and zero. Why is it two and zero? That's such an odd number. Oh boy, where is the reorder list? So, theoretically, those two values that display right here, they should always be the same. But they are not. So, there are two items. But yet, there's zero values. So, why are there zero? Why are there two items? So, this gets triggered definitely, but somewhere here, something, ro some, something goes wrong. I'm not sure what. Oh my, I get it. I see it. Gents, I'm stupid. We trigger remove. You know what this means, gents? When you remove the item from here, this gets smaller. So we, we get... Ah, I'm so stupid. <laughs> okay. So, if I am getting this correctly, we just need to add zero here. We know that doesn't make any sense, or maybe it does. I do not know. And instead of this, we'll just do while. So while items that count be bigger than values that count. So we do not need the if statement. And I don't think we need this here either. So we'll just keep deleting the item that is. Uh, like the, the excessive items. Hold up, I need paint of all things. Okay, let's just say this is the values that we have. Oh, let's make this bigger. This is all of the different values. So we have one, two, three, four. And then we have all of the, well, uh, all of the items. These are the items that display in the UI. So when let's say, for example, we the how do you make this bigger? You make this bigger again. I swear I still don't know how to do this in kindergarten. Size this? No, there was a way to make it bigger. Okay, let's just say that this gets deleted. Let's just say that this gets deleted. Then we will just loop for the entire list, killing for the entire list and keep deleting this file right here or this item this display item so when we delete this item well then suddenly this item becomes the third item so we just we deleted the third item and then once again we need to delete the third item and now as you can see both of these lists are the same so yeah that's it so now if we navigate right here, 
Zero, zero. Wait, are there a bunch of them? Zero, zero. We have done it, gents. So, oh, also, the the byproduct, I guess, is that it, it will always say... Huh. It will always be empty. That's kind of strange. So, I guess we also need to do... In our array entry inspector, we will need, instead of going in here, actually need to check first. Uh, no, 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 how do, should we do this? Okay. If. So if it contains these symbols, these separation symbols, we will well, just separate them. But if it doesn't contain them, well then we'll just, oh boy. We we'll just create a new list, a new empty list, because if it doesn't contain any separation symbols, it's empty. So now it should work. It's empty. And now, when I use the shortcut of importing, and I import English, and I reselect it because it's broken, uh, it's not working. That ain't bueno. Oh, I guess actually I need to import it while not looking at it, but now it's gonna work. I am so smart. This is stupid. Wait a second, that's not. That's not. That, what? That is not how it's supposed to look. Oh, it's now empty. Oh no, I see what's going on. So, we need to add another feature into the the Z. The, the readable list. We have to add this thing. Change values without notify. So you know how every single public void this is supposed to be? This string values. So you know how like every single time we change this, we trigger update items, and then we invoke this? Well, we kind of just want to not do that. That's the idea. Uh -huh. So I guess we'll have to go to update items and uh, add a condition silent, which by default it will be equal to false. But if it will detect that it is in fact silent, then it will not trigger this. So now in here we will just say values this with smaller well, this dot values equal values. So we will be setting these uh, these values right here. To this to these values, and then we'll update items. So we'll kind of do what we do here, except that this time we will specify that uh, items, but instead that this time we will specify to be silent, so it won't trigger anything. Now, if we go into the array inspector, instead of just setting this value because we will trigger a bunch of things and break our day, we'll just do this, which is ugly. Oh well. And in here, once again, we'll just change it silently. So that we won't trigger this part of the code. Sneaking tips with Doc Frankenstein. Import. Select. See, now it works properly. Oh, it keeps deleting itself again. Why? That is so bizarre. <laughs> I'm a little bit confused here. Uh oh. Huh. Well, let's import it again. It's zero zero. Now it's three and six. Which means... We orderable list.
which means that there are only three items but six values. Which is not exactly what we are looking after. Why is this? Yeah, let's lock this and we'll see if we'll be able to figure out something. It's such a specific number. Now it behaves differently again. It was 6-6, six, six, then it... It was 6 items, but we wanted to change it to 0, which is understandable. Actually, how does this... I'll, I'll hold up. Let's re-import it again, and I think it's gonna behave differently again. And yeah, now it says 3. There's only 3 items. But why? Like, it should add them. I just find... Because there, there, was, there are six values and three items, so this should trigger. Six minus three, this should trigger three times, but it doesn't. Why? Peculiar. Yeah, let's observe this content. Currently it has zero items because it has, well, nothing. Now if we import this, it still has zero, but if we select it, it has six. Okay. It has zero. And we will open another inspector for the buying purposes. Right here. And we will select the translation manager. And right over here, down here, there's HID sign. Storage. Authorized person only. Okay, so it has six entries. We select it again. It's only three, although it has six. But it only shows three. For some reason. After running this, it had three values and six this. That doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense, like it should not work like this. It only added half of them this time for some reason. That's really bizarre. Huh, <laughs> Why, do, why does it keep acting so strangely? Like, come on. Give it to me. Give, it, give me the win. It creates only three. Yeah, it's zero and six. This is zero, this is six. I'm oh, sorry, this is zero, this is six. So this is bigger. 6 minus 0 is 6, so it creates, it runs this 6 times, right? For the level. And we know that it doesn't get deleted later so here it actually just creates three instead of six for some reason yeah i can i can only three times that is weird hmm 
0 and 6, 0 and 6, 6, 0. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Unless, okay, it's that, it's that problem again. Remember when I said that here, we were just like removing items and the uh, items that can't change? This is the same case. Var times. And we will calculate it here. So later, no matter what changes, this is a predefined value that we cannot change. Oopsie, wrong button. <laughs> Incredible. Gents, it actually works. Holy garbage. That's incredible. That's actually incredible. Wow. Holy garbage. Okay, we have done it. This is, this is... Shut up. Oh, boy. Oh, this just made me happy. This just made me really happy. Oh, boy. So, we have managed to crack the inspector. And I think we'll be ending for today. Hold up, let me just get open, get... Upload... Inspectors separated inspectors into panels. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in, but we will have to tune out now. It was fun streaming. I hope you liked it. I see that a lot of people actually liked this change of content of me actually coding. Uh, but now, tomorrow, I don't think I will stream, but. Yeah, but I know that on Friday I will definitely stream, I'm not sure about tomorrow. But, yeah, next time it's just gonna be playing a video game, so... Yeah... Anyways, thank you. Uh, yeah, that's it. Bye-bye. We are ending, I'm gonna press the button. Bye-bye.